That was an incredible interview. Uh, it was a little bit noisy, but hopefully we'll get to clean up the most of the sound of it. Everybody, uh, this is JC Daily that is happening today, and uh, we were having a little bit of a um, technical problems. But we are in Kiev, and believe it or not, it's already night, and it gets super dark super fast <laughs> over here. So if you don't get up early in the morning, you are not gonna enjoy the daylight. Now I'm thrilled. I'm super happy to be able to have this or just to share this moment. I'm not gonna call it an interview. Um, and I'm gonna share this story really quick before I make the introduction. Uh, I was planning to, or supposed to come to Kiev, Ukraine in 2014, and there's a word called procrastination. That's me, by the way. And I couldn't just You're not alone in that. <laughs> exactly, so I, I keep, you know, postponing buying my ticket, buying my ticket, buying my ticket, and the day I was gonna purchase it, a huge, huge, um, pretty much um, incident happened in, Ki in Ukraine, in the capital of Kiev, called the Revolution. So that specific day um, made me not to purchase my ticket because you know when you're a foreigner you don't know what's going on and it's advice even for your family members not to go. And then um, I learned so much about Ukraine and during those days civilians took power and took justice on their hands and many innocent lives were lost throughout that day. One of these days, I was watching the news, I think, I think it's on the second day of me thinking, oh my God, I could have been there, because, or I could have you know, been there ne the next week. And um, so obviously my eyes were completely 100% paying attention to CNN, to Fox, to um, all the international uh, media coverage that it was happening. And I've been friends with Anastasia for a while already. I was planning to come and visit with her. And then I turn on my, I don't remember if it was my TV or maybe on my computer, and a young, young person came live to talk about their vision. That person is her right here. So I go and learn about her on CNN. I see uh, what's happening with the young, you know, young millennials, the, the newest generation that is about to take, you know, pretty much lives on their terms. Um, and I heard the pain, and I heard, and I, I saw a, another side of the story that it was shared on CNN. I saw her on I saw her on Facebook. I saw her on um, a social media, and on the big, big networks. Then I see my friend Anastasia placing on her Facebook um, that her best friend was covering. She was not showing off. You were actually supporting the pain. Um, and um, well, now why don't you tell us, you know, to our, our audience? Your name, um, your age probably, where were you born, and then um, we'll talk about some other things. But I just wanted to give a little bit of a background and reference. Okay, my name is Yulia Marushevska and uh, uh, I'm 27. I was born in Ukraine, in the south of Ukraine. And um, I'm grateful for your introduction. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, for spreading a word about Ukraine all over the world. And I'm grateful to this young woman who brought me here okay. <laughs> to connect uh, all of us together. Um, actually, the story that uh, you was um, speaking about, it's not just an uh, incident for Ukrainians, but it's a huge event that changed the direction of uh, where our country and my generation is going. It, changed it has changed people's minds, um, goals, lives. Uh, Russia attacked us after the revolution. And uh, now we are continuing the fight that we started three years ago during this event. One of the one of the things that I'll, I'll make a reference real quick right here is that I remember her story very well, and actually we were having dinner right before, um, you know, sharing with you guys, and I was right, right? The story. Yes. Um, for many of you that don't know or not, you know, just I don't blame you because you know I'm the same way. I live in I live in the other side of the globe in America. 
but Ukraine has been made of you know generations of political war scenery and also you know innocent and great great hard-working people that, that makes a combination of native Ukrainians and also a, a huge Russian influence that is today part of Ukraine. It is what it is. What she was saying is that all of a sudden, people that had Russian families or descendants and also Ukrainian descendants, or maybe only Russian and only Ukrainian, became overnight enemies. You know, in a way, or at least distant yeah. to those, because in this in this city, uh, they use both languages, and they become, this is the funniest thing. They speak Russian and Ukrainian to each other, and they don't change the code of language. They just continue because they understand each other. So, two languages that are very close yet two different languages where it's becoming a factor of a little bit of distance and separation. I, I wouldn't say that that's about languages. I would say that that's about generation thing. That's about those people who experienced Soviet Union and uh, those who are called Soviet people, generation of those who uh, actually felt some advantages of uh, this safe society where everything is forecasted and uh, you know you, you live with all the kind of guarantees for having not a lot but for sure and uh, then when they when Ukraine gained uh, independence these people felt lost and uh, uh, they felt no one needed them and Putin used all this for his We've... own sake and uh, used these people mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I, I feel really sad about the situation that you were describing but even in my family we have uh, such uh, uh, dividing uh, point of uh, my between my grandparents and my mom, my, my mom uh, when she sometimes couldn't talk to her father for years just because they do not share the same uh, political views because uh, my grandparents they were really happy to stick between Ukraine yes. and my mom and dad is like they're true Ukrainians and they want to be uh, to live in a prosper, prosperous independent country, independent country. Yeah. Um, well our promise today is not to not talk about politics yeah. but it's yeah. good to keep um, <laughs> a, uh, you started first <laughs> to, well obviously this look I was about to ask her for an, uh, for an autograph before coming over here because I saw her first on TV on a national international TV <laughs> so like, I was asking you so how were your days since then you know they were now they can laugh about it oh my god you were doing this and I was calling I was so busy with the phone calls and the in reporters and everything it's a beautiful thing to remember that way and you know, also only to remember as a you know an answer of optimism for the country so um, now I'm gonna switch the, the topic because uh, it, it helps us that uh, our audience right here is mostly uh, business oriented in a way but we're all human beings you're a human being you know you also like sports you also like food you also like traveling so that not only makes us just like a robot machine for making you know money or businesses um, being 27 years old and I hear there's still economic crisis that Ukraine is finally shifting out from the you know the economic conditions of Europe and then Ukraine finally becoming recognized becoming you know, part of the European Union as a young millennial 27 years so you just told me something beautiful that happened recently, an event, a working event. Can you, what can you tell us and share the audience a little bit? You mean that I quit my job? <laughs> <laughs> well, that you're okay. free now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, the thing was that uh, I spent uh, last uh, year and a half uh, working for the government on the different uh, the really high positions for uh, being a deputy governor of one of the, of the biggest region in Ukraine on the south okay. uh, with a uh, with a black sea and uh, um, border to Romania uh, and uh, Moldova and um, then I was to the customs in the same region which is like really corrupt and smuggling area and uh, that was a crazy period. Yeah, at the age of 27 
How many people do you have, you know, as a responsibility? I was responsible for 1,400 people. 1,400 people in charge when you are 27 years old. She went to Stafford, by the way, just so, so to let you know that she's been to the States. Very impressed, by the way. And that puts a lot of um, pressure on you. Yeah, it was really uh, harsh period, but um, I, I was honored to have this job and honored to have such a channel, challenge because in a year we really showed that uh, I came not alone, obviously, I came with a group of international experts from all over the world, like from Georgia, from Lebanon, from the US. Uh, I came with a young team, I hired 124 new customs officers, I had like a huge army working with me. Main, <laughs> main dominated industry, by the way, so just to keep your perspective. But in a year we showed that even having uh, the most corrupt institution uh, in a country in a state of transition, you can achieve some results. And in a year we cleaned this uh, customs uh, with five seaports, with uh, 65 percent of all goods that are coming to Ukraine. It was coming through this customs. We cleaned it, it from corruption completely, and business were supporting us crazy because we minimized the time spent on the border, we simplified the procedures, and uh, unfortunately we were not supported by the central government really as they promised to us. Right. So it looks like from what you're you know telling us right now that um, as many other you know public jobs in, in, in the public scenery which is working for the government um, the, um, the bureaucracy makes things more complex and but not impossible because when I first talked to you I saw faith you know in your in, in faith in Ukraine and also um, the fight for you know corruption shows integrity in your persona. So now you are an official unemployed for society. Yes, Thank I you am. and welcome you to a new to, to, to okay. join us as the unem unemployed. I, I, have, yes. I, I have to come to Houston and to work in your coworking you They were telling us she was saying, oh my god, you spent the whole time and she she knows the co-working industry by the way. Um, she said, no, there's one right here and there's another one right there because I just get up out of my house and, and uh, come to do planning, strategic thinking, visualization and vision for your future, your professional future. So, um, what, how do you see in, in Ukraine the horizons or the future for a young, recent graduate or somebody who's thinking about creating their own company or persona? Or, I would say that Ukraine uh, today is the best place of biggest opportunities for a young, educated and ambitious people as anywhere else in the world. And based on that, on what? That's based on uh, open, um, open doors, okay. uh, open social uh, and uh, Open niches okay. in economy. Uh, you have a huge market of 45 million people, uh, and you have a, a huge lack of um, educated, professional people who are ready to do real work. And what we see, like in Ukraine, you can become uh, really like. Um, Successful quite fast if you know how right. like, what what to do and I see a lot of I see a lot of super skillful people over here talented in the design and the and the infrastructure of the city is amazing. Yeah. Obviously I'm already drawn to the talent as you may be aware of. Yeah. I may have ended up hiring people over here in Ukraine. And and then I said I may have ended up, you know, creating a marketing media team over here. And then she said, Oh, because it's cheap. So Yeah, because that's that, that's what I 
they hear from all over the world that like Ukraine is the country with the infrastructure of the first world country, but with the prices of the third world so country. No, no, not even. No, no, no. <laughs> Look, I'm from Colombia. Let's go to the third world. The price of water to Colombia when you go out to dinner, when you uh, you know, housing expenses, it's like New York City. Wow. No, no, it's insane. So obviously, at this particular point, at this particular moment, the exchange rate, you know, the dollars is super still in a strong across the board against the other currencies. And still, uh, of course, we now have a new president, and, and, and you know, I can care less what the president is. I can care less. No president has put one potato on my plate, as far as I'm concerned. My mom has. I remember that. So. Um, you're an employee? Yes. What is your your goal now? To find another job or do you actually have some sort of ideas that you would like to you know become a leader and an owner of the no. sort of a, endeavors? I, I think we are very lucky. Uh, my generation to live in such a special time of crisis of one, uh, on one side, but uh, at the time of great opportunities uh, on, another, on another side. I, I see now how people are uh, living in a few uh, are living in a few countries at the same time, doing like uh, uh, dozens of projects at the same time, okay. and that's the way of. Uh, thinking and acting today. You know, I want to gather the best international practices okay. and to implement uh, them in Ukraine. So you're still looking in a, in, a, in a bigger scope perspective, you know, not, not, not a small business, but actually looking to impact. Yeah, you know, my personal goal when I was thinking how can I serve to my society and what can I do to, uh, uh, to do both, to do my passion, mm -hmm. to be useful for my country yes. and to uh, also to, uh, to be a happy person. Uh, and I, my my formula is uh, for all of this is to bring uh, Ukraine to the world and the world to Ukraine. To Ukraine. Yes. Okay, I can plan. help you with that. Yes. But there's money involved in that, so <laughs> I can probably work together and, with you. Uh, now, one of the projects that I'm uh, helping to do now is to bring the best uh, world uh, lecturers from the best universities to okay. Ukraine to teach. Uh, new post-industrial entrepreneurship and now we have a, a great professor from Columbia University and we are negotiating with guys from the Secret and I hope we have like a bunch of good lecturers who will come and uh, share their thoughts with Ukrainians, okay. uh, with Ukrainian entrepreneurs and we will do some online courses and uh, that will help uh, to open new opportunities for them. So my entrepreneurs out there in the US, you're listening to her. I want to <laughs> post in the video her link. She's thinking and planning to bring outsiders for vision, to, to share the vision over here. So if you own a business and you have something going on and you're also looking for international connection, I will link the information right here just in case. You can link my Facebook if you need and to I will also, connections. Anastasia, I want to also link your information because Anast Anastasia has been the, my source of um, greatness here in Ukraine. Um, Anastasia is the most important connection here in yeah, Ukraine. She knows she everybody. I'm a link. I'm a link actually yeah, you're, to the you're, Ukraine. You're, you're, you're a Lego. You know, put your yes. pieces together. So um, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for, for you know, bringing so much, you know, great human beings to my stay only for a week I already have been able to experience great things my goal is to spend some day tomorrow and then the after with the architectural and also historical portion of Kiev because I mean you know I'm also working over here I'm working remotely so my hours are crazy you know right now I saw my phone is already text messages and phone calls I'm like I want to interview you right now so um, if you were to tell somebody, um, young uh, person with no job, in anywhere in the world, uh, like you've been exposed to co-working spaces, you work for the government, you manage 1,500 people, you talk to corrupted people, uh, what would be that piece of advice that you could give to that young 25-year-old girl guy that is looking to either find a job or start your own business? Just do not limit yourself. Uh, imagine, create, uh, create the job you really want to uh, to do. There is no real no measures, limitations. no limitations. You can work any from any from anywhere, anywhere so in the world and to do anything you want to do. And 
I think the biggest goal for each person in this world is not to work as someone, not to have this or that job, but to fulfill this uh, great inner being. You mentioned something important, you said uh, happiness, and nowadays happiness it becomes a business, you know? I mean, everybody wants wealth, everybody wants happiness, but nobody studies the happiness. You know, actually there's a science, there's an art behind that, and that comes, happiness comes, comes from within, you know? Because what makes you happy, make, not make you happy. Yes, so, that, that's your personal work. As, as anything, as everything else in the right. world, you have to work on it. It's, it doesn't, it can happen uh, simultaneously, but yes. if you want to have it for, uh, for a long time, like all the time, permanently, you have to, to learn uh, how to manage your happiness. Yes. How to, uh, you have to understand what makes you happy, what doesn't. Because you, you mentioned something really important right now, I, I want to make a point right here. Do you think that moving to another city, another country, will make you happy? Um, sometimes, but you have to remember that you always bring yourself with you. You can, you can change. Listen, listen. <laughs> but anyway, you your world yeah, with you. Yeah, that, that, that will be you. And uh, at the end, when you when you will succeed in your work of being happy, you will be happy anywhere. You know, uh, the place where I am uh, the most. Uh, uh, the place where I am the happiest, uh, it's a small village where 30 people live on the south of Ukraine in the area called Vizka. That's a region uh, where actually I grew up and spent each summer. My grandma is from that region and uh, at that region like we, we live in a sea coast. Uh, we don't have uh, internet, we don't have Wi-Fi, we don't have even wireless connection. Yeah. I cannot you appreciate go. you appreciate the, the you know the, the minimal things in life. But but we have but you come in there there and you see these people who never left their village, yes. who spent uh, all their lives, and you see the the old generation who were born and died there. And died and there. And they still in, enjoy and uh, respect uh, each day. I, you know, I watch my grandma who wakes up every morning very early and goes to greet the sun. Right. So look, see, this is the small little things that culture and community and happiness is being built. Because um, you mentioned that right now Ukraine is one of the best places to actually grow as a, you know, professional. It's a business also, yeah. Yeah. like uh, in government, if, you, if you're, uh, th that's something I'm talking to young Ukrainians today, because I'm, sometimes I'm lecturing uh, young leaders and I'm trying to, you know, to wake up them and I'm saying like, look, we have a country that needs about two, uh, two hundred, uh, two hundred thousand of uh, new state officials. Like that's a huge, that's a huge opportunity. That is coming, it's about to come, you know, because yeah. now we are in the generation that, the, you know, the older, what we call them, they use the baby boomers, are exiting the workforce, and all these yeah. positions need to be replaced with new, fresh spirits and minds. So, um, now to finish the, the interview, what question would you ask an audience in America as far as, you know, business related or dream related? Related or happiness related, anything you want to ask, and I'm going to make sure that it will make it over here. Okay. Um, what makes you happy? That's interesting. What, what is uh, your little place? Um, maybe it's physical or mental. What makes you happy? What moves you forward? For me, but it's very interesting to understand why people are doing or not doing something and what the motivation is. What is the motivation? Is it a fear or is it actually a real motivator? So, what makes you happy? We're going to be linking her information right and here. So what moves you can, forward? And hopefully she'll <laughs> join our uh, YouTube blog. And, and I will understand uh, your uh, Americans and uh, I think all the international audience you have better. Okay, we're growing by the way, we're growing. So thank you so much for watching and um, if you have the chance, come and visit Ukraine. Beautiful place. Please do, that's it.